So, this is going to be another Q&D, as I call it, quick and dirty, um, shaky, poor audio, unedited video. Uh, since I'm getting a little momentum here, hmm, thought I'd get a quick walkthrough. Um, yeah, quick. Um, of my old Monarch lathe. Initially, I thought it was a Model A. Turns out it might be a Model B, or if there's another model, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I looked on the Vintage Machinist um, website a little bit, and somebody had posted on my other video that it might be a Model B because it because of the size, because it's got a I believe it's a 16 inch lathe um, with an 18 and a half inch throw because this this four draw 14 inch truck fits with room and that 18 inch back plate fits with a little bit of room um, so right now I just got it cobbled together it, you know OSHA approved I believe that's a five or five and a half horsepower uh, milking pump that um, 220 single phase blah 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 um, I just wanted to see it spin so I just had it so I plugged in you know like I said OSHA approved um, plenty of work to do to get this actually usable I want to do a good cleaning and stuff this four speed gearbox here is pretty cool and I get about 98 RPM in low, and it increases about, you know, I mean, it's 4 to 1, 3 to 1, 2 to, you know, so it, it just doubles it to a second, and, you know, so about 200, about 300, about, you know, a little bit under 4. But now I am getting plenty of belt slippage. I need to need to get this all cleaned up and and see where I am with that and I mean I'm getting slippage here because I don't have the motor permanently mounted and I I did just score a scrapyard uh, reversible motor today that one's non-reversible so but that one worked enough to make some chips um, and I might just put a quick one I did a slow-mo stuff it's pretty cool so um, but and everything everything works on it I've got a, a few things to clean up and and well, there's more than a few. There's a lot going on here, but but everything moves, and yeah, of course, now they say that it's not moving, but that's the, I got to make the lever for changing it from the lead screw to whatever the hell this is called for the power cross feed, but the, the, the power feed and the power cross feed both work. There's plenty of play in things here. Um... And backlash, I don't, I didn't bother measuring backlash or anything. Things are stiff too. They need a really good clean and proper oil and yada yada, whatever. Um, I've got all kinds of tooling and stuff that I need to go through and see what'll work, what won't, what I need to get. I would like to find or make a lead screw, or not a lead screw, a threading dial for it. I uh, haven't had any luck with the little bit that I know about it. Um, I just noticed that. That's pretty cool. And, uh, I don't know if that's original or not, but it. I think it's pretty cool. Focus. If I quit shaking around. Anyway, I thought that, was, that, that, that knurling or whatever on there is pretty neat. But... Um, so, and I have a three jaw, but this is the backing plate for it and it's the wrong thread size. So I figured I'd take it off to, to check the thread pitch, which of course I didn't bring my thread gauges over or anything, but, um, I figured just for rough sizing and yeah, you know, I'm a professional machinist. I'm sure you can tell. And just for 
people will be screaming at me. I can hear it already. So uh, I'm assuming two and five eighths on the outer diameter of that. And you know, like I said, quick and dirty. That's set her for one inch. I know this isn't the right way of doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think it's six, though. Well, I guess I'm going to have to check. The I could have swore that it's... that it, When I checked the, with the six-inch thread cut, but... One, two. Yeah, seven. Okay, that I think I think seven, because I think I think I was I was forgetting to count one. So so I think it's a two and five eighths seven thread on the spindle. I'm not, you know, obviously. If you're watching this and you saw what I did and you know more than I do, you can tell me how much of an idiot I am. So about one and seven, one and three quarters inside. Um, and it, I, I love this thing already. Like I, I just, I mean, this is ugly. I know when I boogered it up and all that, but, and this is aluminum. Just, I don't know the alley or anything like that. Cause it's just a plug that I cast myself, uh, making ingots and stuff. So it's not, not high quality anything, but just for playing around on it was fun and I was able to take some you know without setting anything the way I mean everything the wrong way of doing things but I was taking three quarter inch depth of cut cranking her in and just peeling off and as long as the belt wouldn't slip it didn't care it just just ate it so I I I am so stoked about this. I got so many plans for for this, and oh yeah, um, I'm just gonna grab my flashlight quick. So if this helps anything, so I think that the only numbers were here. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's. Give you vertigo and blind you. So it says, where did I see the first? It says inspected Fred Cook B lot number 221. Is that machine number 10, I think? Oh. Yeah. So, let's see if we can shine this light in a fashion that is helpful. Yeah, so, yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, inspected by Fred Cook. B lot number two two one. Yeah, machine number ten, and that was the only, the only numbers I was finding on anything you know, on the bed or anything like that. So. One of the things that I'm kind of wanting to do, not kind of, I was thinking real hard about either making an attachment that I could bolt on to the, the saddle for a milling attachment. And I don't, you know, not, I don't want a, a conventional milling attachment where you put the, the cutter in the lathe head and use essentially a cross slide table here i want an actual to make it like a mill drill so that that's a 
a consideration and uh you know thinking ways i could could do that and i'm not looking for, you know i don't need it to be crazy precision oh yeah i get steady rest with it too i mean uh, for 750 dollars when i got this last year i was well a little over a year ago i was absolutely ec ecstatic now, best i could tell the machine is right around 100 years old and i love it i absolutely love it so um you know i gotta put do some cleaning and put some things back in place on it get motor work properly on it bolt it on and everything but uh yeah and then I gotta sort through and make racks and everything for my my tooling. That's probably gonna end up going on the back wall over there. I'm gonna run power over here and do this area as my metal shop is is what the plan is. And I gotta hook up the electrical properly and see about replacing this belt or figuring out something for that. Um, but that's what I know about that. And then uh, I got, there's a couple of South Bend, model A, nine inches here. Uh, the, the three and a half footer, my son scored out there at the scrap yard for 95 bucks with this, which there was a guy that got pissed off because this wasn't broken when we looked at it and we went out in the yard to get a part that he needed for his car we come back and to pick it up to take it in and the guy pitched it he had picked it up and then thrown it he must have been mad that we we scored it first but there i got we got all kinds of tooling and everything with it when we got that as as a for 95 bucks that was nice I, and then this one i got for 75 um that one didn't i mean it looked crusty it looked it looked bad i mean and i know they still do but but there was not to this day in the little bit of pulling things apart not one single thing was seized on that everything everything came apart easy as could be so that one is gonna we're gonna come then gonna come apart and clean it up and make it work the only thing is it needs half nuts and we gotta fix the broken um half nut lever here uh and then that one will be going and and then mine mine needs half nuts and uh a change gear lever and i think they both are that one anyway i know it has a couple of teeth that i got to deal with on the back gears and this one I think might have been good, but I don't, I don't remember. There might be a little bit more. So, but, and then hopefully I'll be able to sell off some of the, the tooling that doesn't fit any of these lathes for, to help cover what I got to in, put into them. I want to, on the, the, the one, the nine inch that I'm going to keep because, we talk, my son and I talked about maybe trading so that he has the four foot bed and I keep the three and a half foot since I've got the big one. But regardless, whichever one I do, I want to do bushings and wipers and all of that. You know, there's going to be some stuff I'm going to need for that one. And especially if I add the reversible motor and, you know, then I'll need the drum switch and all of that. Or, or if I can learn, you know, figure out where to learn how to teach myself properly with like the contactors and the magnetic switches and everything i haven't haven't looked real hard but i haven't had a whole lot of luck to be able to put you know if it's worth it i don't have the money to slap a vfd on it and all that and right now that's just not not in the cards for me and this this heavy 10 this one's the one i use for Oh God, 10, 12 years. I love this lathe. Wonderful lathe. 
and my home nickel plating that I learned from the YouTube. That's holding up real well. That's, I don't know, six, eight months now out in a in the shop where there's no temperature control. It gets hot, it gets cold, it gets humid, it gets dry. There, you know, and that's that's all surprisingly you know it's it's holding up way better than i thought it was especially considering it's you know it's advertised as just decorative but you know but that one ended up trading to my buddy so that that's no longer my lathe we just have it haven't had the chance to get over and get his place set up with the room for it but that one that one unfortunately will be going away it just wasn't quite big enough for some of the things that i wanted to do so and i think that's about all that i really um it's already more babbling than i expected to do in this so you know, there's some fun junkyard scores and i just made the deal on buying a 48 to 52 i think it's an f7 um, cab and front fenders for a pickup and i already got some rear fenders so that'll be i'll be bringing it home but it's going to be a project that one that one i won't i'll be putting it on the side until i can get some of these other things done and out of the way I need to weld up the the top wheel on that. I'd like to get that going. Part of me thought about using that as a frame for the big English wheel, but I got a different plan for that. So anyway, well, there we go. Long-winded babbling. If you know anything about this uh, lathe, as far as specifically what model it is and where I might find a, a thread dial for it and also optimum spindle RPM. A couple of things that I saw online, brochures or whatever, similar looking lathes, but I'm not sure on models or sizes or anything, were in the 12 to 311 rpm 13 to 322 rpm right now the way that it's set up with belt slippage and whatnot i'm getting from 10 to about 300 and what was it 380 something rpm but there's a fair amount of slippage and especially in the direct gear i i haven't run it real i i only did a little bit of testing with it because i didn't like how long the capacitor was staying engaged on the starting cap on that motor i didn't want to burn that out and everything so i don't want to ruin things because i'm being impatient i've already run it more than i should have and i want to i want to try to preserve it and and uh, anyway, so that's what I can say about it. Um, if there's anything anybody else can help, I oh, I do have one other lathe, but I only have a couple of parts out here for it. And I'm deciding, trying to figure out if I should fix it. It's a Sears 101, like an Atlas 618, I think it is. This is the lead screw for it. I just this I just find this so humorous. Yeah, it's like it's like comparing a Yugo. I'm dating myself a Yugo to a freight train. Atlas lead screw, Monarch lead screw, Atlas Monarch, and like dang. So. All right, this is it for real. I just see it. I'm almost 20 minutes, so...